uh, on page 7 of 12, under Old Business Resolution 12-20, Federal Amendment Section 402, Board of Supervisors Elections. I think that should say second reading instead of first reading. Carolyn? Same uh, for the next one down, it should say second reading, Ordinance 04 2020, Lot Line Adjustment Administrative Decision. That should be second reading as well. And then under D, Employee Appreciation Dinner, it should be Employee Appreciation Breakfast. Those are the only changes that I have. Is there, are there any other changes? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, Citizens Forum. Carolyn, can you read the, uh, read the notice? Welcome to this meeting of the Centerville Town Council. This is a public meeting and we welcome your participation. By attending, you acknowledge that this session is recorded and aired live on QAC TV 7. During the meeting, we ask that you turn your cell phones off and hold personal conversations outside the meeting room. The scheduled agenda is available on the information table just outside. Public comment will be limited to three minutes per person. The Town Council respects and appreciates your desire and right to convey your message freely. And in keeping with the dignity of proceedings, we ask that all views be expressed in a respectful and civil manner. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. If questions are a part of your comments, we will refer those to the appropriate individual. Thank you. But just as a reminder, if you do have a question, we will do our best to answer it. If it is something technical of nature, we may need to get back with you. Uh, and if you just want to have your three minutes to talk, you're welcome to do that as well. We know if there's anybody signed up. I did. So, did you sign up out there? I, it looks like it's a county. Yeah, I don't oh, know. Oh, just the county yeah. All right, then don't. That's, that's fine. fine. You know, if, uh, Mr. Storm, if you want to come up, you're welcome to come up. Please introduce yourself. Say where you live, and you got three minutes. Do I sit down and wipe my hands first? Or? You know, I, you got to do whatever you got to do. But you, you do need to have the mic close to you just from uh, just so that TV can can hear you. And you know, those wipes are there for you if you're. I won't touch it. I got it with my phone. Wait, go. I touch my phone. Oh, this is all confusing. Yep. Good evening. Um, I understand that. Can you just uh, introduce yourself and say where you live, please, oh, just for the record? I'm, my name is Fade Storm. Um, I live at 209 South Commerce Street in town here. And um, I understand that, that uh, the fiber optic folks are going from one end of the town um, to the other end of the town and leaving the middle of the town um, unattended. I, I don't know that that's a fact, um, but it certainly is the rumor. So it's a little puzzling to me that we go from point A to point C and leave point B out of the equation. Um, I guess my, my, I know the rules, we're not supposed to insult anyone, so I guess I shouldn't mention Atlantic Broadband. Um, I don't know, you'll have to cut me off when I'm not allowed to do that. I was on the phone actually for three hours, well I wasn't on the phone, I was on the phone, but I was on hold for three hours yesterday trying to get a small detail taken care of with Atlantic Broadband. Um, that's kind of par for the course. Um, I don't know. Frequently, my internet slows down. Uh, surprisingly, I don't get a rebate from them when it doesn't live up to their promises. And frequently, the line to my house, rather than putting a new one in, will, will get disturbed and not work. And I get to go another, I don't know, five or six days at a time, sometimes longer, without internet service. I homeschool my youngest child. I'm a single dad. And um, that makes it a challenge because that's how we do our schoolwork. It's also how I do a significant amount of my work. And I also have a mission and I thought I had that off. I'm, let's try this again. Um, so it's very disturbing when I don't have internet service. I think for most of us here, we know that um, there's kind of a monopoly, you know, with Atlantic Broadband if we're gonna have any, any speed at all. Um, and I don't know if there's anything that you guys can do um, to see to it that fiber optic goes all the way through. Um, if there was any way that you could um, take care of that, I don't, dag on it, this is a smartphone and I'm not. Wait, there we go. Normally the way I start, turn it off is just to let the battery go dead. Um, 
So if there is any way that you can talk to these folks um, to change this up, that would be really good. Because for a lot of us in town, um, what we have is insufficient. And the fact that we're um, part of the town, one of the things that we were gonna try and keep from having, I know years ago, is when, as the town expands, to make sure that we're all one town. That's me. Um, sorry about the interruption. That's okay. Does anybody have any comments? Steve, is there, uh, is there anything that can be done? Do you have any comments or anything to add to that? I mean, the only comment I would have is that the, the current company, uh, Talkie, is, is serving the uh, community of Northbrook. Uh, they have you know, indicated they have maybe some interest in providing service to the town of Centerville, um, you know, throughout Centerville at some point. But uh, at this point, we've not received any proposal um, to entertain that. As far as the, uh, the, the comment about Cynthia Village, you know, that the company's serving one in the town and the other in the town, Right now, they have not proposed anything for Symphony Village. Oh, okay. So, you know, I'm not saying they, they haven't talked to some people at Symphony Village, um, but we have not received any formal proposal that they plan to go to Symphony Village. Oh, okay. So at this point, it's just Northbrook. Is this the same company that did Chestertown? They, this company has done work up Chestertown. Did they do the whole town or did they? I'm not familiar with what they did in, 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 in uh, Kent County or in Chestertown. I just know they've done work up there. Well, if you guys want to give those folks my number, I'm, I'm more than willing to pay to have them connect me up. So, what the, the, what, uh, I, I'm sorry. If I could. So Please. I've done a little bit of due diligence on this, Spain, and I appreciate you coming in. And I, I've talked to at least two providers of fiber optics in the last two weeks that are thinking about or actively working in town. You know, I think they have to finish, the company in Northbrook has to finish by the language in our permit in Northbrook before they can, they can proceed to seek a permit anywhere else. But, you know, I think they have to negotiate, and I think it's important, this is in the record, I mean, they have to negotiate with Delmarva Power and Verizon for the use of the telephone poles to deliver that service anywhere. I think there are plans by the companies to, to do that because they don't just want to come to Northbrook and then leave town. I don't think that's a money-making proposition. I have made very clear to both companies we want to serve the downtown and certainly Centerville Heights so right. my kids aren't using a, a 25 gig upload speed or download speed I should say. But I, you know the, the problem is I think we there is not a there's not a lot of support to help us put this stuff in because we qualify under the federal government's definition of right. high speed as being served by high speed internet. So there's funding from the state, from USDA, and from the federal, from the federal communications commission. None of it applies to the municipal limits of center, none of it. Okay. And so uh, in speaking with one of the companies on just Monday, they, they said specifically there's nothing the town can really do at this point uh, in terms of you know, the, the telephone poles. Now, what I'm going to suggest is we submit some correspondence to, to Delmarva Power as a council and to Verizon and just say we, we want to serve the town of Centerville, the historic district, Centerville Heights, the downtown residential districts, and the lateral streets of old Centerville and we would encourage them you know in the nicest way possible to work with all the fiber optic providers that want to come to town to, to make that happen okay. and then I was also going to wait until the CETA update I was going to give but you know if the board agrees I, I would like to empower CETA the Centerville Economic Development Authority to to bird dog this to, to get it done and work with the fiber optic providers, work with Delmar, but just be kind of our eyes and ears on the ground from the town standpoint to make sure that this gets done. Uh, the representative I talked to on Monday said he thought, this is one of the companies, he thought we could have the full town municipality of Centerville covered maybe in two years. So they, they do plan on coming downtown, down 213. Okay. That's the current plan, you know, whether they, what, what pace they take or 
what permits they seek, when and where, I don't think we can speak to that. Anybody else have any comments? I will say that I share your frustration as well. Both my wife and I work at home and we've got three kids as well. And when that internet goes down, boy, I hear that right away, right? So it's, it's very frustrating. And, you know, I, I would, I've always had a vision of having free internet downtown, right? I mean, how great would it be to be able to sit at the old town square and, and have some free Wi-Fi, free high-speed internet? So I definitely share your frustration as well. And I think one of the differences between a company like Atlantic Broadband and these fiber companies is Atlantic Broadband is a franchise. Uh, we have a franchise agreement with them that says that they must serve everywhere. These other companies, they're not, they, they don't fit under that franchise model. Right. And, and, you know, from what I've heard, they want to serve everywhere, right? Where are they going to go and, and how is it going to put, get put together, I think is a little bit up in the air. But I would share Steve's, uh, uh, you know, request to have seated bird dog this and, and go after it. So I think it's, it's a matter of time. It's a frustration that it is going to take a little bit longer. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm And does that memorandum with ABB say that they're to service well or just service? <laughs> so if there's a wire that. connected to my house, even if it doesn't work, that's... <laughs> anyway. yep. All right. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else here in public comment that wants to come in and make a... Make a comment? Did we get any emails, Carolyn? No. All right, I'm going to close the citizen forum. We're going to move on to appearances. We've added one at the beginning here. This is the Christmas tree decorating contest winners. Do we have somebody that wants to come in? You guys can, can come on in, it's fine. You can stand there if you want. So, so this is usually one of my favorite meetings all year. We have, uh, it's chock full of Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and you know, everybody who's here who has participated and, and it's one of my favorite meetings because it's everybody's here for a, for a happy occasion. Although we didn't get, we, we, you know, we can't really have a big crowd here tonight. It is uh, a, a great occasion. We had a beautiful downtown, uh, you know, the, everybody from, we had volunteers, we had our parks board helped out, we had the Legacy Foundation, we had a donated Christmas tree and all the, the youth groups that did uh, help to uh, decorate their, um, you know, their trees as well. So it was, it was just fantastic and it really looked great uh, all, all season long. We did have three uh, winners for decorating winners and we do have the, the third place troop here tonight is Girl Scout Troop 1271, I guess led by Denise Crossley. So I'm going to come down and I'll, I'll present this to you guys. Um, Kellen, would you take a photo of it uh, with them? And then maybe you guys can describe a little bit about uh, maybe what the, so what do you guys, maybe, you want to hold it? Maybe you're going to clean it off, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to leave it too. <laughs> there we go. All right, so Girl Scouts are 1271, led by Denise Crosby. Maybe if you guys want to introduce yourselves or tell a little bit about what it is that your team was this year. Here, we got to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. We made two trees this year, and one was about peace on earth, and the other one was about eastern shore. Yeah. Any special decorations or ornaments in particular? Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming in. Have a round of applause. Decorating uh, winners. We had second place with Jake Carey, Laura Robbins, and then first place with Girl Scout Troop 446, Mandy Landon. I believe that they've either picked up their trophies already. Okay, we'll come back next year and we'll have a much bigger room. It's probably Girl Scout cookie season time if you guys are doing that again. If anybody enjoys Girl Scout cookies, thank you. All right, uh, next we've got Raymond Aaron on the, on the agenda. Is Raymond here? Hey guys, you can pull up the chairs if you want. Oh, sorry, I moved them. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, 
President McCluskey, Vice President Klein, board council members, I brought uh, our chairman of the board, Wayne Bloodsworth, with us. I uh, hope you don't mind. No, that's he, fine. If you don't know him from that, you certainly probably know him as his previous 40-some career as your uh, town male guy. Uh, I wanted to just give you guys an update. Uh, each year, you're gracious enough to provide some funding, and we would like to let you know where that went for the past year. Uh, as you, well, first off, just a little history. Fire company's been around since uh, 1889. So uh, that same group of folks, uh, obviously not those there now, but 37 people back then started uh, the fire company. Uh, believe it or not, we still only have about 68 people now. So in 130 second year, we've only doubled our membership. Um, but beyond that, uh, 45,000 is what you've been able to provide us. 25 goes to the EMS, and 20 goes to the fire side. So the EMS, as you know, um, is the ambulances. We have two of them. Uh, we uh, have some help during the day that we, we pay some folks, and then we turn it out with volunteers beyond those hours. So we uh, had planned on purchasing a new ambulance this year, but fate handed us a little different uh, course, and we had to buy one a year early. And that's the one that's out front now, uh, in front of the building. If you look out the windows, you can see it. And we had to, um, we didn't have to, but we put some uh, better advanced lifting materials, uh, inspectors in the back. And that was, uh, that was at about a cost of 40000 So between that stretcher uh, and the cost of the ambulance, there's the EMS portion of it. And then on the fire side, uh, our, our budget is... Um, probably a half a million dollars, so it went to gear, it went to equipment, and it is spread out throughout. So that's where it went, and uh, just a little more information, an engine today that you see going up down the street is about 600,000. The ambulance that we just bought is about 300,000. They're not stocked with equipment, it's just that's what the cost of the unit is. Um, volunteers are still turning the equipment out as far as our apparatus. Uh, had no pay, so we still do that uh, as a volunteer, if you will. So, uh, we just wanted to let you know where we were. We ran, um, I wrote my numbers down to make sure I don't mess it up. I want to say ran, there were um, approximately 690 ambulance calls that we went on last year. Uh, we had more, but that's, uh, that's what we went on last year. So I'll take any, if you have any questions or Anybody have any comments or Like, questions? hey, what do you guys do? Uh, we certainly take memberships from anybody. Jeff is already part of us now for many, many years and serves as one of the commanding officers, as you know. Um, we take administrative, we take fire, we take whatever you can give us. Anybody have any comments, questions? Thank you. One of the things I did want to say before you guys go is uh, normally we've got, you know, we've got four new council members this year and, and normally you guys put on a great annual banquet and, and the council members are always invited and it's been my honor for many years to actually be able to Thank do the you. swearing in right. and I was honored again this year to do it, uh, I guess it was two nights ago, I was able to get to, to swear you. in the officers as well and so it's, it's really is a great thing and, and you know, as I had said the other evening, I mean, the, the fact that you guys are willing to get out of bed go and jump into a fire, a burning house, and rescue somebody. I mean, that just takes a, a special person. So we, we certainly appreciate that. Um, we'll convey that to our membership for next Monday. Norm normally, we, uh, we do give the check to you guys during the annual banquet, but since yes, you didn't have it, I've got yes. it here tonight, and I'd like to be able to present it to you tonight. If we could, we'll get a photo op. And Absolutely. Uh -oh. Here, you got to get this picture. Oh. <laughs> Look pretty, Wayne. Whoever you want to have a side up. Put my hand on the only thing. Give the money. I'll smile. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 All right, moving on. Next, we have board and commission oaths of office. We, I've got uh, Steve Layden and Tim Zuella. We have both uh, individuals here tonight. Um, there's Tim. Is I don't know if Steve's out there or not. Let me check. Okay.
All right, he's out here. We'll get him next time. Yeah? Uh, Tim, why don't you come on around here? We've got to get you on the microphone and we'll, uh, we'll get through this. Yeah, Think this is going to be close enough, George? Yeah. All right, so what you're going to basically do is you're going to raise your right hand, you're going to say aye, and that's the name of the soldier. Repeat after me. Aye, Tim Zuella. You solemnly affirm. You solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And bear true allegiance to. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Member of the Town of Centerville Planning Commission. Member of the Town of Centerville Planning Commission. To complete, to complete an existing term. To complete an existing term. Which expires April 2021. Which expires April 2021. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. According to the Constitution and laws of the state. The Town Charter. The Town Charter. And laws and ordinances. The laws and ordinances. Of the Town of Centerville. Town of Centerville. Congratulations and thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> right there. Oh, right there. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Planning Commission is meeting uh, this month in a little bit, and you're going to get probably 10 pounds of paper with all the ordinances and laws and zoning and all that stuff. So. I'm uh, to that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Light reading. Too late now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> All right, we don't have Steve Layden, so we're going to move on to the Centerville Park Advisory Board. Uh, we've got the chair here tonight. Uh, Mike, so, so the reason that we're having you tonight, with, this is kind of an ongoing every uh, other council meeting or so. We're, we're, gonna, we're inviting the various boards and commissions to come in and, and introduce themselves to the new council members, kind of talk a little bit about who you are, what you do, what you do for the town, and, and what the council can do to help you out. So the sure. floor is yours. Great. Thank you. My name is Mike Whitehill. I'm the chairman of the uh, uh, Centerville Parks Advisory Board. Parks Advisory Board was started by ordinance back in, I guess, 1985 or thereabouts. And uh, you know the mission statement for the for the board has uh, remained basically the same uh, to provide center, uh, citizens of Centerville with leisure time up opportunities, uh, meaningfully, purposefully uh, a result in self development, satisfying activities, enriching social and cultural experiences. Uh, we have a whole bunch of new members on the board, but I'd, uh, I'm sure I, uh, I probably ought to familiarize you with them in case you want to have uh, you know sort of offline chats. Uh, Sandy Simpson uh, is, uh, has been on the board uh, the longest, and uh, she takes care of, she's, uh, although the, the, we have the authority to create ad hoc committees, we don't. We actually just have, uh, you know, a lot of our members just take on special projects. Uh, Shelby, Robert, you were already on the board, so you know full well. Steve, I think you're probably the, the least familiar with the process that we have. Uh, and Sandy does our annual report. Uh, we were unable to meet this month. Uh, and we're arranging a Zoom meeting. We will be approving the 2020 uh, annual report, which we're required to do by charter, and we'll send it to you guys uh, so that you have it for your files. Any information that you hear about tonight that you want, just let me know or let Carolyn know, uh, and I'll be more than happy to forward it to you. I have uh, very substantial files about most of the parks and most of the plans. Rich Ryan, uh, you, you just gave awards for the trees. That's his thing. Rich does our tree competition every year, and uh, he does a great job at it, and it's something he really enjoys doing. Uh, every one of us that, uh, that works on the board has a special thing we'd like to do, and it always works out much better than trying to assign somebody something that somebody doesn't want to do. Uh, Priscilla Molesky, uh, uh, Priscilla is actually one of our more active members. She walks the trails and keeps, you know, keeps us apprised of the condition of stuff. And whenever she bumps into anybody like I do and all the rest of the board members, we ask them, you know, are, are you enjoying our parks? What can we do to serve? Uh, Fred McNeil, uh, Gene McGarry, uh, Ryan Holgrieve, and uh, our new members. Uh, good distribution around town and a good distribution of ages. So we have a young, younger person on there. Uh, and of course, uh, Fred's been around for forever, uh, very familiar with our education board and so on. Uh, so he has that going. All of you know uh, we have the Millstream Trail, which you may not know is we have 8,300 linear feet of tidal waterfront, more tidal waterfront than any municipality of the 154 in the state. 
So, um, which is damn good for us. It's also a huge asset because it terminates not from the Millstream Park, it terminates in Wharf Park, which for years uh, was up, you know, sort of controversially purchased uh, uh, as commercial property and then was turned into the Wharf Park. Wharf Park is uh, developing uh, as quickly as we can get grants. Uh, all the kudos for that goes to Carolyn, who is our grants guru. Uh, and on our, our uh, and Norma from the office is our goddess of good order and clean language. Uh, <laughs> she makes sure that we do good things uh, cleanly and sanely on our board. So we do have great administrative help. Uh, Carolyn uh, is a grant master, and uh, we're fortunate to have her be able to help us with uh, grant applications. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of grants for the work park. Uh, soon uh, this week, probably beginning of next week, we'll start the redecking of the boardwalk, boardwalk, uh, uh, the boardwalk at the wharf, uh, followed immediately by the installation of lights uh, down the entire uh, boardwalk and the installation of uh, pedestals, water and, water and uh, electric service uh, for the slips that we now have down there. The dredging is moving apace. I checked with the dredgers, uh, where it'll be a while before they get to our part, but they have agreed to, uh, to dredge our slips, which makes them eminently more valuable than they were before. Basically, you were parking and mooring in mud. A couple of projects we have coming up that we've always been trying to consider. Uh, this goes to the issue about how the, the council can help us out and how we may be able to a better interface. Uh, I'm gonna just read these off real quick so you get an idea of the kinds of projects that we have outstanding. Uh, swing set at the wharf, we, it's planned and it, uh, uh, the installation is uh, slated. Uh, grading and storm drainage for the Millstream Park Road, it's always swampy down there. That's gonna take some dollars, uh, more dollars than we have, but anybody that's been down there knows a lot of the reasons why people uh, you know, uh, move from that park to the wharf park is because the wharf park is dry with a different playing surface than the uh, Millstream Park. Millstream Park takes a, a great playground um, uh, population in the summertime. We're looking at uh, uh, um, uh, finding public art for the wharf. One big monumental piece of art to be the flagstone of that, uh, of that entrance uh, to the town from Watson Road. Uh, uh, fitness stations along Millstream Trail. Often grants come up for those and Carolyn and I are always looking for grants to help us out with that. Uh, we have the uh, stakeout and blazing of the uh, Millstream uh, Trail 2, which is, uh, runs in that 70 acres behind Symphony Village from Symphony Village all the way down to the Millstream, uh, following the Millstream, all the way back down behind the hillside. That project is just a lovely uh, jewel just sitting there waiting to happen. State Highway is going to assist us with uh, archaeology because there's an ancient uh, spillway back there, a sluice way, roughly behind uh, Compass Regional Hospice. If you go down that hill, you'll see this historically uh, was a hand-dug sluice that has great significance and uh, archaeological value. This would be a touchstone, a key piece uh, for actually hiking that trail. That wouldn't be paved. It's not going to be anything but blazed. You hike the damn thing and you, and you, you work out doing it. When is uh, that? What, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you said that's in process now or? No, we, well, we have, the, we have the park laid out. Uh, we uh, would end up having to, this is something we'll be coming to you guys for. It's going to require a stakeout budget uh, and a, uh, a budget for the, for the blazing. So there'll be, these are projects that'll be coming up. Uh, as soon as we can get them in, in the map. Uh, and, uh, every, every time we get new LIDAR mapping from the uh, state, <coughs> we like to do an update of the tree canopy uh, map. Uh, the parks board sits also as the tree board. We adopted the tree canopy code, uh, a fairly substantial code that was developed uh, in part of, uh, I guess it's Tree City uh, was a contributing uh, uh, member of that, but also for the purpose of trying to uh, track the difference in impervious cover in our town and the amount of greenery that we have. So we can we map that aerially. Uh, every time new uh, LIDAR mapping comes out, it shows us whether we're making progress or not. And if we're complying with our goals to increase that. Also that helps us update the impervious cover map and our uh, master plan. Uh, right now 30 acres per thousand people is, is the goal for most municipalities for parkland. Uh, and, um, so we're about, uh, we're actually with that 70 acres, we're well over that. Uh, and our master plan shows how that would be done every time you annex a piece of property or develop an infill piece of property, how many acres we would need out of that property to keep our parks uh, in a par with uh, state guidelines. 30 acres per? Per thousand. Yeah. And right now we're, we're fine. We're actually in really great shape. 
Uh, we have a dog park we talked about that would be uh, uh, for years. Uh, we had always hoped to have it. We located, I think, 15 different properties, Tim, uh, that that could potentially go on. Uh, they have, um, the problem with that, of course, is that we don't want it municipally owned. Well, it could be municipally owned, but we want it uh, owned, uh, operated uh, and maintained by the public. No dog park works uh, uh, from our research if it's all trying to be done by a, by a municipality. Uh, people care more about it when they have skin in the game. That would, that would require great citizen outreach from you guys uh, and, um, uh, and from uh, in coordination with the Parks Board. We would do whatever we can to get it going as far as the criteria and developing the specifications for it. Uh, recreation, uh, I don't know if you all know, but uh, uh, Millstream Park in the summertime has a ton of potsers and pros, chess players, uh, come down there. And you'll just see them laid out, uh, and it's wonderful to watch. Uh, some damn good players. Uh, and uh, we would, uh, one of the goals we have is to take one of the pocket parks and turn it into a little potser park for amateurs like us to, uh, to go in and play chess uh, and, uh, and have uh, more game related space instead of passive, uh, non recreationally oriented um, activities. Uh, we have wet, uh, wetland restoration project at the Wharf East, which is what they call the Watson Road lots, I guess. Uh, that project can't proceed until we get done with the Fragmati dredging, which is uh, uh, under being uh, handled as part of this dredging project. It's a mitigation com component of the uh, of the uh, dredging project that the county is doing. They've been very gracious to help us with that. Well, it's a five-year, uh, three three-year minimum uh, uh, process of eradicating the Fragmati before we could start with the wetland restoration. That plan has already been developed by um, uh, Environmental Concern. Uh, down in uh, St. Michael's, and uh, and is ready to be implemented when we kill the fragmites. That will give us three year process that we're just starting now with the dredging. It'll be starting out. Yeah, it'll be starting when the season when it's seasonably uh, and, uh, with this uh, dredging project. So that will start the clock yeah. on that. So you can see we have projects that can roll in a timeline, you know, so that we could come to you guys with uh, with special projects. Our five, we have a five thousand dollar budget. Uh, and I believe uh, that uh, we had requested uh, before that that be a rolling that uh, that be a rolling budget, which is certainly helpful because you know uh, we could save in some years when we don't have full projects we can add the next year's uh, funding. It's not a use it or lose it basis uh, like, like we have right now. Uh, and uh, by the way, I wanted to thank you all for uh, approving the addition of the mill of the wharf landscaping to the uh, to the uh, uh, maintenance contract. We have a really great contractor right now that we're very, very happy with. You guys, have, I think at the last meeting, uh, approved the addition of uh, that Wharf Park landscaping because it is a real pain for Public Works to try to do that. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, the, uh, we would uh, have uh, a seat at the table for a review of large projects. You know, if you just approved a new Planning Commission member. Planning Commission members generally get to see them. Parks Board generally doesn't. Uh, and I think uh, one of the things that we had asked was that we be, you know, kind of uh, um, included in that process uh, so that we get, because in some cases, uh, parks dedication or parks proffers are not particularly useful uh, in terms of land or location, but they may be useful in terms of giving you guys uh, cash in lieu of for the same value. Uh, we have a grant uh, outstanding right now, I think, with for Banshell, but that went in with the uh, uh, community parks and playground. Banshell at the Wharf Park, parking lot down there, uh, lighting and a walkway system to connect everything. This will be the last phase of the uh, development of that park according to the park master plan that was done, uh, developed in the committee and ultimately approved by the town council. So uh, when we look at what we need, Public Works is, uh, is, is our best um, and, uh, um, um, and at, at this point only, uh, you know, sort of maintenance operator uh, and we get great service from them, but uh, it's, up to, it's up to the town to, uh, to kind of keep that going. When you have cemetery, the summer duty, when you're maintaining the, the cemetery, I know Earl knows every name on every stone in that cemetery. I mean, he is the sailor man. But, uh, but one of the things they do is maintain the grass along that trail uh, and maintain other parkland uh, and uh, uh, keeping everything in great shape. Uh, it's really inc incredibly important for us that the uh, Department of Public Works uh, side the utility side is actually, uh, you know, kept full and, and well, well staffed and well paid because that that's one of the things that makes our parks, you know, kind of uniquely um, um, 
valuable to the to the citizens. So we always kind of, uh, you know, it's pretty necessary to lobby for good uh, for for good public works because they've been incredibly helpful uh, to date, and uh, we don't want them, uh, you know, to be overloaded and not be able to get to the stuff that we know they want to get to. That's the problem. They want to get there, and sometimes they just can't. There's just so much stuff. And every now and then a tree falls down or something happens and you know your guys are taken taken off you got great people uh we want to make sure that they stay and are healthy and happy uh obviously we do the, the tree uh the tree decoration that's one of our little functions and uh, generally that's uh the kind of stuff that we do um the um uh, overall uh, um, kind of consideration that we don't kind of have much of is recreation a budget for recreation compared to just parks is uh, is kind of different. I mean, we're not doing bus tours to to uh, you know uh, Longmire or whatever. We have uh, a longer burger. We have a, a, a very lim limited budget. We're sticking around doing mostly parks, okay? Uh, and that's why I was hoping to be able to get some game playing in there for uh, for uh, for the uh, parks that we have uh, and other activities that could, that can entertain. Uh, uh, older adults with these fitness stations they're periodically located along the trail you have a mile and a quarter on the trail itself so it's a it's a two mile jog out and back that's a pretty healthy run and uh, that uh, we would be you would be able to stop at stations periodically along the way and pick up a series of exercises that would be dedicated just for that just for those areas so we are advisory we don't have any we don't have any kind of uh, authority uh, we have no legislative authority. We have no, uh, you know, kind of uh, any kind of authority. But we do uh, try to uh, advise the um, uh, the uh, council uh, of the projects that we have coming up and the kind of things we want to try to do. Uh, budget is very, very limited. We've done very well with the limited budget that we have. Uh, and uh, if we get into a situation, let's say, uh, uh, doing a really nice sculpture piece at the wharf, we would try to do a fundraiser for that rather than come for a, or a grant. Uh, uh, and I actually believe, I think Elaine, uh, uh, Priscilla talked to you a little bit about that. T things that we can do, we would do through, uh, through our own fundraisers, but the majority of the stuff is done through grants, and uh, we've been very successful with the grants that we have. Uh, because our, park is most, our parks are mostly along the water, uh, we also have the advantage of being able to get grants for uh, wetland uh, and buffer maintenance and, and conservation which would not be the case for an inland park, let's say out by the high school. So we have that advantage uh, that, uh, that comes along with all that waterfront. Just as you give a point of comparison, uh, when the uh, Chesterfield farm was considered for development, uh, we had, that's about 4,900 more feet of tidal waterfront, which would, uh, our trail would follow along the uh, upward edge of. Uh, that would simply add to that same waterfront uh, ownership. Uh, that, that we would be um, inheriting as part of that park proper. Uh, in fact, their, their initial plan, three different plans, incorporated that park tra trail. So that's about where we are. I don't want to take any more of your time, but uh, I do want to thank you for, uh, for uh, giving us a little jolt to help us get that swing set in and uh, other stuff, and also for uh, helping us uh, get that maintenance contract improved. That's very important. Those guys do a really good job. We're probably the most successful uh, uh, pr uh, contractor that we've had, it's a it's a tough deal, and they always realize they've blown the bid uh, about a third of the way through the summer, and all of a sudden the work just starts getting slack. These guys that we have right now, South uh, Southeast Creek, uh, has been really good throughout throughout the the seed the two seasons we've offered them. So, entertain any questions, question Robert? Oh, I was going to say, go ahead. Oh, good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, being an alumni of the Parks Advisory Board, yeah. thank you, Michael. Oh, thank you. All and the for board serving. members. I have one question. Uh, or no, I have a number of questions, really. Uh, last meeting was not uh, held because there wasn't a quorum. What is the quorum for the Parks Advisory Board? Oh, right now it's four. Four. Uh, yeah, it's four members. And we had this corona. Some of our members have just been ill, myself included. Uh, and uh, they just felt like they, they didn't want to come to the meeting. So we're going to arrange a Zoom meeting. For our next meeting, so be uh, oh, okay. So, help is a Zoom meeting in the budget? Uh, Carolyn, I don't know. You don't, um, well, it wouldn't be televised, it's not televised. No, no, no that's okay, but I mean, the yeah, Zoom no, meeting it, for the members, you would do that with the regular. No, you just it's just, just a um, 
you don't need it doesn't cost anything doesn't cost anything you're restricted okay. to about so it was just minutes, that but you weren't aware that you didn't have a quorum that you didn't arrange the zoom meeting because uh, i mean the reason i know was one of the members said yeah i missed the meeting ah yeah okay and so that's why i was just wondering if there was a budget question no. that we didn't no, have not at all. Or, not at all in this case robert we uh we, we just thought on the on the on the uh so that's yeah, your plan since we're still under the pandemic issues conditions that yes. meeting between the members will probably be zoom in the future and uh, until we can not okay we obviously That's, like to meet we we met outside i think we had a meeting outside the last yeah, meeting we had uh, uh, next to the last i guess yeah uh, that we actually had and then we had a meeting in the wharf building sure. but members were concerned and i don't blame them we're, uh, we no, have many members fine. that are older uh, and uh and not fit uh I loved walk, I loved walking the Millstream Park Trail, uh -huh. and uh, two things. Uh, one, I love the bump out you have. That's about halfway down um, the big um, platform uh -huh. where you overlook the nature. Right. Uh, as I was walking, I was thinking with all the um, students being home nowadays, and I know a number of mothers uh, would love to take their children and maybe have a science expedition, get the kids out of the house. So maybe the thought of um, having a placard of what you see at different points, you know, maybe point out that we have uh, medallions on the trees, right? right? You're talking about points of interest? Yeah, points of the, interest. At the uh, overlook? At the overlook or where there's some other areas, just as a, be part of a physical education science thought. Sure. And yeah, we got a lot of folks know come down. That you would probably do something like that. Sure. Also, when I was down at Millstream, um, you talk about the swampy nature that yeah. can be there. I talked with Kip, and he said that's kind of sort of the nature of the ground. Yep. Yeah. But, and, and this is my own personal thing, is I used to play basketball a lot in parks. And uh, I think if we can find uh, somebody to uh, donate some paint, and maybe come up with a few bucks to replace the basketball rims. We'd have a very nice basketball mm -hmm. uh, court. It does need painting, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I, a couple of young people were there playing one day, and I asked them about that. And they yeah. said, yeah, we'd love to have more games down here. You know, I mean, I used to, you know, when back in the dark ages, I played basketball all the time on oh, the playgrounds. So, nice. so, and that I looked at those rims. They're, Oh yeah. Well, and, uh, we had originally we had a chain, yeah, uh, and I didn't like that. And the uh, uh, parks board, I mean the public works guys, ended up. I went to my mailbox and found two nets in my mailbox, meaning put your damn self. And uh, so I went down with a ladder and I hung up the hung up the nets and I mean, be happy I'm just to do saying, that again. That would be make that court very inviting, especially for the neighborhood down there. Uh, and uh, and you can always cheat on your three-point shot. So oh, I yeah. agree it would be nice to, to do that. We'll put that on our list yeah, and try to, uh, American Tennis Court, and uh, oddly, is one of the companies that does basketball striping and I may be able to get a real quick quote just to give you, know, you, it's just a, you know, a ballpark paint, idea. It, it needs a paint job, the court. Sure, you know, a little, little bit of a definer. I agree. Uh, you talk about uh, the trails. I know it's wonderful. Everybody uh, but then you just mentioned tonight about the uh, uh, a potential trail from Taylor Mill through the... Yep. Okay. I had one of my uh, neighbors, constituents, whatever you want to call them, said, uh -huh. what about if we put a light bridge, not a bridge uh, for cars, but what about a bridge that would be good for people to be biking or walking into that area? Mm -hmm. Has that been part of the plan? That's part of the deal. There's actually two crossings uh, where uh, topographically, you know, okay. starting all the way down at behind where the uh, um, property is for sale right now, right there on 213. Right. Uh, running all the way back behind the hillside and all the way back okay. up through there. So the, uh, once you pass the historical points, there are several places where I brought the trail up the side of a very steep bank, right, uh, right on a little ledge. There's a, a beautiful little uh, possible trail through there. It runs all the way up to, but does not touch Taylor Mill Road. Uh, we are, uh, have made several overtures to the Gardner family to see if we could get a donation from them or an easement to carry it all the way out to Taylor Mill Road, which would be on the low side of your yeah. stormwater pond. The other thing would but be they, to bring they, it down. They, you have a enough lot open of space. 
is a uh, lot of bicyclists in the Symphony Village. Yeah, now that would not be a bikeable some... trail unless you were on a mountain bike and you well, were in really good shape. Well, you should see some mountain. You should <laughs> you should come to the village. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you talk about the dog park. That I know has been uh, an idea for a number of years. Yep. Even within the whole county. And you said we needed to drum up interest. Yep. Would it be possible? You said you got 15 sites. Could uh, drop me a note. Tell me what or do you think would be the three top sites mm -hmm. and then we can uh, advertise it, get the word out and get some interest maybe. Oh, just to see if people want to do it. Yeah, we have that, but we I'm have just a, saying. We've mm -hmm. always had this problem uh, since I was on the council and long right. before right. where uh, we've had these park board meeting, uh, you know, every month, uh, the second Tuesday of every month, or the first Tuesday of every month and uh, no one shows, nobody from the public. Now, everybody's perfectly willing to gripe about our parks on Facebook and other way, which is typical of, of, uh, of this kind of thing, but uh, nobody shows up with, uh, with any guidance or thoughts or what well, you could do better or whatever. I would just like to ask you, Mike, send me your top three sites and I will make an effort to get the word out, hmm? see if we can get some interest, and then we can work it. You know? It really is one of those things where you have to have a, if your community interest to make a dog park work would be in the surrounding county area. It yeah. would not just be just for the town. It would be very difficult to, uh, to uh, kind of exclude someone, let's say, from uh, Three Creeks, which is right just in. next door. So, uh, or, you know, out of Corsica Estates. So your uh, outreach would have to be broader than just the constituency of the yeah, town, which is why we would not want it to be a town maintained facility. That's correct. It really right. has uh, to be uh, a, uh, a civically uh, oriented, driven, maintained. Yeah. They collect the fees, they do the maintenance of the park and the cleanup, uh, and uh, our involvement from the town side would be very uh, as minimal as possible, sure. kind of on the model of uh, of Quiet Waters Park over in Annapolis, that area. Right. You know, a lot of those are, are done in a different kind of basis, but most of the parks that are successful uh, and are the best maintained and the least vandalized are the ones that are maintained by the people. They got skin in the game, and they'll right. take care of this stuff. No, that's great. One other thought: um, Millstream Park. Uh, it, this is, it, I noticed it that we have the wonderful playground equipment. We have the nice pavilion with the tables. And right next door is a funeral home and a cemetery. Uh -huh. And I don't remember, but the thought occurred to me, and I even talked with the chief about this. What about, would there be able an opportunity to get a grant or something to put up some screening so that when people are there, they're not looking at a f cemetery? In a funeral home. The only thing that probably would be appropriate down there, the uh, when the funeral home was done, no screening was required. We didn't have it in the code. I Back understand. in that day, we did not have uh, you know the required buffers that are in the code now. Uh, an attempt, it would have to if you did a vegetative screening of some kind, or provided reg, you know some sort of uh, uh, hedgerow, uh, that would be one way to do it probably. Uh, and that anything that we would do, we would want to contribute to our contribution to the not only the tree canopy, but also to the uh, um, you know, to the benefit of the critical area buffer. That we're it could be in. a public-private uh, partnership. You know, approach Helfelbein. There, multiple. Well, they think they have one of the cleanest, well, most well-maintained sites in town. Oh, I, I, I know. As a but commercial still, business, it's beautiful. Yeah. I'm just saying perception and view. Uh, yeah, I've never noticed. Uh, you know, sort of coffins flying by. Uh, I haven't had much of a. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I haven't just... had much of a problem with that yet, but I see your point. And I maybe just think we could make that a very uh, family-friendly park with all with all the excellent playground yeah. equipment we have there. Is yeah, and, and I'm wondering. The trail does go up pretty close. It actually abuts the uh, cemetery property. Oh, it uh, does. In a brief in a brief portion, but most of it's in the unused part of the mm -hmm. old baseball field, which we have yeah. uh, you know mobilized to. Good, thank but you. But I just had that thought, and huh. I even talked to the chief. If we did put a screening, would that be <clears throat> uh, potential for uh, nefarious acts? You know, hiding things like uh, you know maybe drugs or alcohol or something. Oh well, we got you've got uh, you know uh, three quarters of a mile of, of wooded trail. I understand. It makes a pretty good spot for hiding. I don't know that that would create a problem. Uh, you no, know, no. From but the I, I just. Side. Yeah. All right, we'll have, well, you, can, you, you guys I understand. can look into that. I understand yeah. what you're saying. I just wanted to bring those points up, yeah, and, no, and I appreciate No, I appreciate it. it. Thanks. I, I, and so I'll get you the information as you right. requested, 
and uh, and we will uh, uh, definitely look into the striping because that is something that would be a nice enhancement oh, yeah. to get kids down there. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? I just want to say thank you so much for giving this presentation, and I'm so excited for you know to see what's going to happen with the Wharf Park this year. And I think so many of these ideas that you had that you listed today, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we can start making some work and progress on those because. Well, I appreciate that, and I think probably the thing that that uh, and kind of uh, uh, what Tim was kind of headed toward is that uh, as we come up with these projects, they become more real. Uh, you know, based on either uh, demographical changes or requests from the public. Uh, we could uh, prioritize these projects a little better and then come at you with, uh, with a series of, of uh, budget needs if they were to be done outside the park's budget or if we needed supplemental funding uh, that we couldn't get through uh, um, Madam Brinkley's uh, extraordinary grant finding talents. Wonderful. All right. Okay. Anybody Thank else? You. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, we're going to go to old business now. We've got Ordinance 11 2020, Tex Amendment Museums in the R2 Zoning District. This is just the second reading. I'm just going to read the top of it. Town Council of Centerville, Ordinance Number 11 2020, an ordinance of the Town Council of Centerville to amend the town zoning ordinance codified as Chapter 170 of the Town Code to allow by right museums in the residential R2 District and to define museums and enforce the town zoning ordinance more effectively. Uh, this is the second reading. This will be heard before the, the Planning Commission. We'll have an opportunity to look at this and comment, and then that will come back to the town. And I believe that we're going to have a public hearing at our next meeting. Is that correct? Okay. Um, any, any, uh, any changes? I don't know if you guys have looked at it or if there's anything else you want to add to it. Well, that was my question, that uh, are we going to have a public hearing, uh, feedback from the community? Uh, People have heard about this already, and there was the question, why, why just R2? It's such a, it would put the ability to have museums in more places within town versus maybe denser areas in the historic district, which is maybe R3. Right, so and that's the question that I was asked. And yeah. uh, that's why I'm bringing no, it up. No, it's a great question. So, so the way that the zoning code is written is that in, in down zones, right, so in R3, uh, it says anything allowed in R2 is allowed in R3, right? Does that make right. sense? Okay, so, I understand that, but they're saying why did we, they're, they, their question, why do we have to have R2, which is much less dense versus R3? Yeah, uh, I'm, we can certainly change that if that's the will of the council, right? It, uh, no, I, I, that was an inquiry that, I, that somebody approached me with, and I said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Why is it R2 versus R3? Well, the farming uh, question. The, the again, a reason, uh, Steve, or was that who? I know this is kind of, if I'm re remembering from past meetings, this is uh, part of uh, having Mary Margaret's Women's Museum in the Turpin. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Which, is, which is zoned R3. Right. That is yeah, so. And so, you know, when I wrote this, uh, I wrote it down as R2. I, I, I was thinking about it today. I don't even know why I did R2 versus R3, right? The, and the only thing I could think of is because everything allowed in R3 is all, anything allowed in R2 is also allowed in R3. But if we want to change it to make it R3, that's totally fine too, right? And, that, and, but uh, I just, but I'll say it again. I was approached right. why. And so, you know, Citizens uh, are aware of this, and they wanted to know why. So, I guess Thank I you. would. I would. Go ahead. Uh, this is being done in anticipation of Locust Hill and the Maryland Women's Museum, which you know I certainly support. But I I have no idea where the Women's Museum stands in terms of its future. Uh, if they actually have a formal legal agreement with the Turpin Farm property owner to use that home for ever or indefinitely. Uh, their website has says they're closed. They have a virtual exhibit. And you know, I think this is somewhat premature. Uh, this this ordinance in front of us, not to say that I'm I'm opposed to it by any stretch. And, I think we ought to try and make the Locust Hill operation work for Mary Margaret and her group, 
Uh, but one of the things I talked to Steve Walls about earlier this week is, is there a way, you know, I do have some pause about creating another institutional use in the residential area. Uh, you can already, you know, there's already churches, the, the town can put buildings in the residential area. So this would be, not to say I, I think museums are going to pop up everywhere, but I would be more comfortable if we made an exception for the Locust Hill property for this museum. Uh, I don't know, you know, I don't, it's unclear if we can do that or not, I guess. Uh, it's not, it's not cut and dry. We don't like to make those type of one-off exceptions to zoning rules, but to me, and then, and I would wait to do that until we're sure that the Women's Museum is, is coming along and has the funding necessary to operate sustainably because uh, we have not heard from the museum. Uh, I just feel like we ought to make sure that's on firmer footing before we start turning the, the zoning code upside down a little bit. Not nope. being an expert on uh, Robert's rules or zoning, are you proposing we table this? Is that the correct term? Uh, or I mean, I'm, I don't I'm Tabling it. Oh, I'm asking, I what, I'm listening to you what you're saying. And, I, I just, you know, if it, if the council wants to pass this, I think they're welcome to. Uh, I'm not sure where I am on that, but I, I just, it feels like there's a tidier way to, to meet their needs than, than this, perhaps. Is, is, I'd just like to have that conversation with Sharon and Steve and see if we can't figure out a way to get, since there's nothing else on Turpin Farm right now, we don't know when there's ever going to be anything else, is there a way to make an exception to this property that gets the the women's museum what they need without sort of opening up this other institutional use in r2 and r3 and i would certainly say if, if we're i am trying to limit the scope of this i would say let's at least change it to r3 so it covers what they want to do that's a there's much smaller footprint as r3 versus r2 um that, that's those are my points i guess all right, so I got a couple of comments on that. So the, I will say that the impetus for writing this was because the potential of the museum coming, right? It's a chicken and egg kind of thing. You can't, you can't have the museum if you don't have the ability to legally have it there. That being said, uh, I don't believe that this ordinance should be tied to a lease or perpetual or whatever that is, right? I think the council should, just, should say, hey, this has come up. This is a potential good use, if it is a good use, in this zone, whether it's R2 or R3, for the town, right? Is it good to have historic museums in residential neighborhoods, specifically R3, whatever the, the zone might be, and then move forward with that? If, if the answer is no, I get it, right? I'm, I'm, I'm always afraid of unintended consequences, so I, I totally get that. Um, in, in terms of a variance, I, I don't see being able to go from here to there for them. What we could do is we could either change this to just say R3, and therefore it's now open in all R3 zones, or we could put it down as a special exception, which essentially is a by right use, but there's an extra step, and they would have to go before the Board of Zoning Appeals, there would be a public hearing, and then the Board of Zoning Appeals could add on uh, spe you know, specific um, conditions, and the Board of Appeals essentially needs to make sure that it won't uh, hurt the moral, whatever that is, of, of the neighborhood, right? So, so there's kind of an extra step, and that way, if, if one of the concerns is you're going to have 50 museums all over town, well, now by right, that's not allowed. You have to actually go to another step. So, you know, if that concern is there, I, I think we can rewrite it to uh, to make it a, as a special exception. And if, if we don't go that route, I think we could totally change it to do R3 only because that was the original intent. Um, it may require us to change, I don't know if number nine is museums and R3, so there may be some, some little changes that would have to be made um, to bring it from R2 to R3. So I, I have a question for maybe Steve, or and it doesn't have to be answered tonight, but in terms of the bold text bold underlined text at the bottom. Uh, B, the Planning Commission may waive the 20-foot minimum setback, and C, the lot shall comply with buffer yard category C. 
Um, are the other institutional uses that are allowed in R2 subject to those same limitations, those same provisions? Because if not, I mean, if, if it doesn't, so my question is, the church, you can build in the R2, right? Does it have to, can the planning commission waive the 20 foot minimum setback for a church? And, and that's just one example, or if it's a, again, using the church example, does the church have to comply with the buffer yard category C? If not, we've created a sort of inequitable right for museums or churches and however you look at it, that we just need to figure out in terms of are the other institutional uses subject to these same, it's just an opportunity I think to tidy up the code more generally. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a, uh, you know, a, a good question. I don't believe that the Planning Commission can change setbacks for other types of institutional uses. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe what we do is, is we kind of hold on this. Do we already run an ad for the, for the, for the, um, okay, so, so how would we go about doing that? I mean, we can, we can push out the public hearing. I mean, essentially just cancel it and do a new one at some point down the road. Um, we, we, can we make changes to this in advance of a, a scheduled public hearing? Uh, you can, but um, since the public hearing is scheduled for the 21st, I would cancel the 21st public hearing and push it back if you're going to make substantial changes to it. I mean, it's up to the... Well, I think, uh, I mean, substantial changes that going from R2 to R3, that's probably substantial. Right. And if you're going to make it, if there's any changes under the de under your A, B, or C that's in the language, the bolded. I, I tell you what, why don't we do this? Why don't we push back, push it back to, to next month? It's going to go before the Planning Commission. Let's see what the Planning Commission has to say about it. We'll incorporate the questions that, that uh, we've all brought up here tonight, see what they have to say, bring up the equity issue about uh, the setbacks and whatnot. And then, you know, if they have some changes, we'll, we'll see if they can kind of nail through what they, how they look at it, and then we, it'll come back to the council. Yeah, that will give uh, the Planning Commission uh, time at their work session at the beginning of next month. And then this could come back before us with maybe their thoughts, comments, recommendations. Yep. Does that sound uh, like a, a reasonable way to go, Steve and Tim? Yep. Okay, why don't we do that? Okay, Carolyn, you. do you know what, what, what add, we're doing? Uh, one other thing, when you, uh, when you address the, uh, the chicken and the egg concept, um, one thing that council may want to consider, because it's a good possibility when you're talking about what's the viability of this particular museum you know, coming to fruition, I would assume that uh, entity might have trouble getting funding to get up and running if they don't have the legal authority to be housed on a, on a certain site. So that is one of those chicken and egg things. I mean, it might be nice to hear from them. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Get them to come in. Yeah. I, that's, <laughs> yeah. I'll make it three of us that agree on that. Yeah. yeah. We want to see if, if we can get Mary Margaret to come in and to give a presentation or just an update. For, yeah, you know? provide an update. See how far they are along. Yeah. 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 If, they've, if they've got a business plan, that would be yeah. extraordinary to see. Yeah, it would be. Okay. I, I will say that in terms of the concept of allowing museums, there are several historic houses here in town oh, yeah. that could be a good that right. could be a good museum at some point in the future. And just from an economic development standpoint, I think there's that potential. But I definitely understand the the risk of unintended consequences when you open up something like this. Uh, speaking of museums, uh, is the county the old cor county courthouse? Is do we have any? to say if they want to put a museum in there I mean it, it is I'm just I've heard you know they're they're, tr they're formulating uses for that building I mean I think that anything that they're gonna to want to do there we should have a seat at the table they yeah. because they are in the town of Centerville they su are subject to the jurisdiction of the town of Centerville right. so in the in the in the CBD district, right, which is where the courthouse is, right. uh, there it is allowed. Cultural institutions are allowed. So a, a museum like uh, Rights Chance and whatnot, yeah. those are considered cultural institutions. Right. So it would be allowed by right. Yeah, we do have what uh, uh, 
I'm just going to ask Elaine uh, Studley uh, Legacy, how many historic houses do we have in the town? Seven, eight? Uh, it depends on how you define historic. We have mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and listen, this is not really a okay. back and So we've right. got a, a considerable historic district, and, and, you know, if Elaine wants That's to come fine. up later on, we could, we could have that conversation. Yeah. I, will ask, I will ask offline. Thank okay. you. Uh, any other questions about this? All right, we're going to move on to resolution 13 2020, charter amendment for council member vacancies, second reading. Uh, town Council of Centerville, resolution 13 2020, a resolution of the Town Council of Centerville for the purpose of amending the town charter to revise the process for filling vacancies on the council and matters generally related thereto. Um, we had some changes that we did last time. Is this a public hearing or are we uh, able, we're having a public hearing as well? All right, so this is just kind of a. A second reading, we'll do a res- we'll do a public hearing and, and decision next time. Correct. Okay. Any other questions council members have on this? Okay. Questions? Moving on to uh, item C, recommendations for capital slash operating purchases. Good evening. Thank you for waiting. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yep. All right. So um, after the discussion last week, you kind of just wanted to see where we are um, with money and expenses and revenue and what I thought we would be able to fund um, in capital for General Fund Enterprise Fund. So what I did was I put together a recommendations page letting you know the three bank balances we could spend out of, what the balances were currently, and what I thought would um, suffice to get some of the capital done that we weren't able to do um, this fiscal year. So. I'm not sure, did you want to go line by line? I don't know if you guys had a chance to review. I would, I would see if there's, uh, if somebody wants to make a motion to approve everything as presented, and if not, then we'll go down line by line. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve uh, everything that's been recommended by, uh, by staff? Just to remind uh, myself, we went over all these last time, right? Karen? Yeah, these were, so this was all the um, given in the, I guess the transition. These were all the capital, right, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. We've I gone will, through um, these and you are making, within the budget available, this takes into account the higher priority and the more beneficial items Correct. for each of the. I met uh, with each department head and I said, right. give me your top three yeah. or four. Yeah. So, what you're saying, if we trust our department heads, this is their wants and needs, yeah. which we can meet. Some are absolute needs, right. but for, needs. for right now, right? For, for, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I make a motion that um, I make one, just one yeah. comment. I want, uh, under the parks, you'll see there's an electric and water for small picnic shelters, parking lot for Worth Park for seventeen thousand. Um, there was a small piece of this that is approved in a current grant. Mm-hmm. Current and some of it as well in a future grant that we haven't been approved for, but we put in and may know by spring. So you may want to make this one contingent on if we get grant funding, the grant covers it, and then we don't need this 17,000. Um, but if we don't get grant funding, we need it to get done anyway though, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. I mean, my preference would be to leave it in. And then if we don't, if we get the grants, then it just goes back to the general Just goes problem. back yeah. to the general uh, I I make a motion that we uh, accept these recommendations by our finance officer. Is that for both general fund and yes, enterprise? Yes, okay. all of them. And okay. meet our department heads' needs and the te- needs of the citizens of Centerville. Okay, is there a second on that? I will make a second for a discussion. Uh, <laughs> is there any discussion on that? Are yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Kip's not here, but I, mean, I see we've got a three-quarter ton pickup with a snow plow under sewer and got a dump truck under streets, 75,000 just. Kip, Kip was able to come tonight, but George is here in his place. Oh, okay. Just uh, <laughs> curious about the mega demand for two new vehicles, that's all. I'm sorry, what was your question? The need for two new vehicles curious in the about general the, fund and then a small the, dump truck and a, and a three-quarter ton pickup truck with a snow plow. Yeah, both both of these are, are extremely necessary. I mean, I'd be happy to show you the condition of the vehicles that we're replacing. Um, the one, the small dump truck, um, is replacing a, I believe it's a 2004 um, truck that just the other day we put sheet metal in the floor to 
Come yeah, fight. Let seven. me just interrupt George for a second. If I remember right, last month Kip was here, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. And we went over this line by line. And I know when we went around to all the facilities, Kip pointed out, at least to me, some of the items that, like George is saying, these current trucks are Old. put together with baling wire and Board duct tape. Band. So let's let's not be penny wise and pound foolish. Let's let our employees have proper equipment. It's for safety. It's for efficiency of doing the job. And if we have the funds, I think we should move forward. That's my comment. And uh, if you want further uh, description, uh, I will uh, let Steve proceed. Steve, and I'd, I'd be happy to show you the vehicles that we're replacing because they're, they, it's, it's a definite need. The, the Chevrolet, the one in the water wastewater, right now is sitting at Danny's getting more repairs and it spends more time at Danny's than it does at um, <laughs> water wastewater. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Is there, is there any further discussion or questions? I'm going to call for the vote. So the, the motion is to approve the recommendations for capital slash operating in both the general fund as well as in the enterprise fund. Uh, the general fund total is 350715 The enterprise fund is 225000 uh, All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Looks like it carries. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did see Steve Layden out there. Why don't we get him done and then Karen, you can stay up here. I think we're going to talk about uh, Queenstown Bank. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I'll let you MC this one too. Yeah, you do it so good. <laughs> All right, so, so we're going to do an oath of office with Steve Layden. Thank you for coming in, Steve. Yeah, I can't apologize enough for being late. That's okay. Uh, so why don't we come around this side and let all the audience get to see us while you do this. So basically you're going to say, please raise your right hand, say aye. Aye. And after your name is full, repeat after me. Aye, Stephen Layden. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Di diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Member of the Town of Centerville Board of Zoning Appeals. Member of the Town of Centerville Board of Appeals. To complete an existing term. To complete an existing term. Which expires April 2022. Which expires April 2022. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And laws of this state. And laws of this state. The town charter. The town charter. And laws and ordinances. And laws and ordinances. Of the town of Centerville. Of the town of Centerville. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We now have a full board of voting appeals, and we're still looking for one more. Uh, alternate. We need an alternate. Oh, we need an alternate. Okay. Anybody out there in TV land wants to apply? <laughs> That's fine. I'll take you are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you want. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> All right, moving on. We're going to talk about the Queenstown Bank. We're going into new business now. Queenstown Bank loan. Karen. Yep. Um, so last week we just discussed um, how much the current CD was, Aaron. how much... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, turn the mic on. <laughs> um, last time we discussed what the current CD we, we have with them, how much it is, it was collateral for the, uh, the loan, and how much um, the balance of, for the loan was, and there was some discussion about possible talks of using the CD to pay it off. So I just came up with a memo to kind of give you an idea of Here's what the current CD balance is. Here's what we currently owe. And um, if we were to use this as, my, as recommended to pay off the loan, there would be approximately 70,000 more that's in the CD that wouldn't um, be needed to pay the loan that could go in the general fund, the permanent fund, or whichever you guys decided. So I didn't know if you guys wanted to have a discussion. Um, I did put together the amortization schedule. 
the promissory note from Queenstown and the PWA um, with the county part of the package. So. so I'm happy to do some background on this if anybody's interested in hearing where this all came from. So in, uh, when, when the county was putting together the county courthouse, the new county courthouse, they were required to come up with parking. Uh, so they did not want to go buy another piece of property uh, for parking. So uh, what we came up with was they were going to pay the town for parking. Uh, the town would then go buy the parking. The town would get parking as it could be used for the county courthouse and it could be used for just general parking. They were going to pay the town uh, 20 annual payments with an increase every year of two and a half percent, I think yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. um, and so what the town did is the town went out and bought the Ashley building, which is next door for the purpose of long term uh, to, to create parking downtown. Um, the town paid cash for that, I believe, right? We paid cash for the building. That's what the loan is. That was the loan is. Okay, what, so, so we got a loan we, and, and we instead of uh, instead of take, borrowing the money from the permanent fund and then paying it back every year with interest from the county payments, uh, the town decided at that point to take out a loan. Now, we had a CD uh, that was at Queenstown Bank. It was a million dollar CD. Yeah. So instead of the bank saying, we're gonna put a, we're gonna use the property as collateral, the bank said, we're gonna use the CD as collateral. So the problem with that is the CD is earning 1% one, 1 and the promissory note says that they will earn they will earn whatever the CD is earning plus 1%. So every year that we're getting this payment, it doesn't get any, any more secure than the county commissioner is paying the town. We're paying Queenstown Bank at least 1% just to do this transaction. You know, a couple of years ago, we spent we spent a considerable amount of the permanent fund, and I I would like to see that permanent fund get back again. So, you know, we could pay this uh, pay the CD off, right? And then pay you the, pay the loan off with the CD. Pay the yeah. loan off with the CD. Take that seventy thousand dollars and either put it in the general fund or put it in the in the permanent fund. And then in, what I would like to see done is every year that the that this county pays us, has that money, has that check go directly into the permanent, the permanent fund. So over time it will grow and, and it will then hopefully be whole again. Right. In the back of the PWA, um, you'll see the payment <clears throat> schedule. So you're right. going to see how much is coming each year. I think, Steve, this is kind of addresses your concern to get us more on fiscal footing. That I mean, does this do this a move forward? I would hope. Yep. Okay. Um, it would just, reduce the debt. I just like to make yeah. sure. I mean, <laughs> I appreciate Steve's interest in this. Uh, he, I like his number cruncher, <laughs> which is good. We so need how much somebody. money. Do we get from the county? Um, on the back of the PWA, you'll see. Um, oh, there is per year. It there changes year. every year. It looks like this. It goes up. So, so that's a promissory note. In 2021, we're going to get 53,436, and then in 2022, it goes up two and a half percent. Every year, it goes up two and a half percent. Okay. Um, so, I would like to see a motion to approve this recommendation that we. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we use the CD to pay that pay off the debt. We use the delta between paying off the debt and what's left in the CD for a deposit into the permanent fund and then subsequent payments from the county are automatically deposited in the permanent fund. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. I'm not going to repeat it back. If there's any, uh, is there any further discussion? Nope. All right. I'm going to call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It carries. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Go home, Karen. <laughs> You Item B is Fireworks 2021. So every January, I ask Carolyn to put this on the agenda, and it will stay on the agenda until uh, <laughs> until we have the fireworks, <laughs> or until another global pandemic closes us down. Right. So we have been help holding fireworks here in the town of Centerville for many years now. We um, we typically have a budget of about five thousand dollars, I believe. The county gives us some funding, and in the past, 
We've also gotten donations, I think, from the American Legion, et cetera. So, uh, you know, my point tonight is to let's get this on the calendar. I would like to um, schedule it for July 3rd, which is the Saturday before 4th of July. If it's the week before, then it's, it's, in, um, it's MML, and we're definitely going to MML this year, so uh, we <laughs> can't do it then. I'm going. You, know. <laughs> you get to carry the flag, carry too. The flag. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, so I'm going to make a motion that we approve $5,000 for fireworks 2021 and that we hold them on July 3rd, and it's a family day like we've had in the past. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next is the Outdoor Movie Slash Fishing Derby 2021. So for the past several years, again, except for this past year, we've held uh, an outdoor movie at the wharf uh, in conjunction with a fishing derby. Sometimes if the fishing derby has gotten rained out, if the movie gets rained out, we typically hold it in the warehouse down there at Big B's. Um, we've, it, it, it's, it's really a lot of fun and it's the end of the summer and the wharf is just looking so great. So I was thinking about doing it on the 28th of August, which is right before the weekend before Labor Day. It's still kind of warm, because uh, believe it or not, we've had nights in September down there where it's gotten actually kind of cold. So it would be the 28th of August, uh, we would have the Fishing Derby, the, the Corsica River Conservancy are the ones that always run that. We give out trophies to the kids, another you know, great council meeting after that. Uh, we have a movie and, and we certainly will be open to uh, uh, whatever movies you guys think would be good family friendly fun. Uh, and we would certainly encourage all council members to come down. A few years ago we did, we, we played Star Wars and we had a costume contest. I actually came in on a boat dressed up as Darth Vader. It was fantastic. So <laughs> yeah, anybody we, who wants to maybe get dressed up, okay. we got them. All right, so I'm gonna make a motion that we keep whatever budget we had last year. I don't re recall exactly how much it was, a few hundred dollars, I think. And then uh, for August 28th. Second. All right, is there any further discussion? I've never seen any Star Wars movie. What? All right. Who of us? A point. Okay. You get to come as Yoda. Yep. <laughs> I have a point. There's um, a resident in uh, Symphony Village. He gets first run movies. Uh, we have movie nights in Symphony Village. Maybe we can get us. So we can get all the first run movies. The problem is we have to pay the licensing fee. That's uh, like. You, you, it's, oh, uh, I just uh, said we can <laughs> have to pay the licensing fee. <laughs> It'll be a donation. Oh no, we're we're required to. We're required the as a town to, to pay. Oh, we are. Order to show it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we can actually <laughs> buy the movie or get the movie ourselves, but we still have to pay the licensing fee. Okay. Yeah. Right. What we've actually done in the past, past couple of years, is 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 we just go buy the DVD, right? Right. And then we we give everybody who comes, we give them a ticket just for coming. Here's a free ticket, and then we pull it out of a hat, and somebody has to go gets to go home with the movie that night. Oh, that's okay. nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. No, All right. Do we hire a company to do the, the screen and everything? The county, the county has all that. So we, we do pay the county for okay. the, the, the labor and then they put it up. And, but they come in, they'll put it up, they take it down. Uh, in the past, we've had the creamery has come and, and sold ice cream. We've had Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts come and do like popcorn and soda. And yeah. it's a little fundraiser, you know, yeah. uh, but it's a, it's a great, it's a, fun, awesome. it's a fun time. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, next, we have Pennsylvania Avenue property initial discussion. So I had brought this up last time. Uh, the town of Centerville owns the vacant portion of Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, this property was purchased originally when Penn Station Joint Venture was putting up the buildings on the other side. They were required to put in a significant amount of parking. Uh, they got a waiver for a lot of that. And, and the intent was that they were going to rent that property, which was at that point, it was owned by uh, the state railroad, whatever you call that, right, back in the day. The lease never got signed, it never got done. They built the buildings. The town ended up buying the property from the state railroad uh, for two reasons. Number one was so that we would be able to secure parking there for across the way uh, and get some town parking. And then there was also some pad sites that would be available for the possibility of developing that site, um, you know, adding some buildings and possibly even yeah. building a town hall or, you know, town community center. So a couple of years ago, the town negotiated a public works agreement with the Penn Station joint venture. Uh, and it's, it's here in our packet here tonight, basically to ensure that the parking will eventually get built. And, and, and if you boil down the, 
the, uh, the, the, the public works agreement, basically what it says is that the town can demand 20 spaces a year, uh, up to 80, 80, I think it's 80 spaces total, and they're required to build it out with full drainage, gutters, asphalt, the whole thing. Um, we don't have to ask them to do it every year, 20 per year, uh, but we do bank it. So, so it'll be two years this year, so we'll get, you know, if we wanted to, we could say build us 40 spaces tomorrow, or we could just wait at some point in the future and say, now we know what we're gonna do, we wanna build this, we want you to build all this. So essentially the town is getting parking, a fully built out parking lot for free. They don't get exclusive use to it, uh, but you know, it is going to benefit them as well. So, you know, one of the things that, that I, I would like for Steve to start looking at is, is there a need for consolidation of town offices, right? I mean, we are maxed out at uh, town hall, right? We've got people that are located down at the wharf, uh, the police department. Maybe there's, you know, we're talking about relocating the police department. Um, we did some exercises when we were doing this, uh, the joint venture that we had, Greg Torchio, I think, came through and did some, some mapping out of what the pad sites might look like. So what we might be able to do is sell a pad site and use some of that money to build a part of a building, et cetera. So you know, what, what I'd like to get some consensus here for Steve to go out and actually hire a planner or get some, some, some quotes for a planner to really determine what we can do with this property. Um, there's also some interesting historical and cultural Things that are on this, originally when this was a railroad site, they had a turn, a turnstile, I guess, is that what you're, or a turntable. So the trains would come in and the, the locomotive would actually spin around and that, that structure, it's halfway buried and it's kind of broken up, but it still exists. And so we may be able to utilize some of that and maybe a park portion of a park. So I think that there's some creative things that we can do, but I think that now that we're talking about potentially relocating the police department. Now we are really, I think, realizing that we're bursting at the seams. I think we should investigate what, what we should do with this property. Um, and so with, go ahead. Uh, Steve, I, I believe you talked with every single council member about the whole uh, future of offices, correct? Yes. Yeah, he's nodding, okay. And I like the idea that with the Pennsylvania uh, corridor there, that as Steve and I discussed, a, a concept of a three-story building where you have your police department on the first floor meet all the needs that Chief Joe had talked about last meeting. Second floor would be all the consolidating all the admin and everybody be there. And then the third floor would, I think Steve mentioned that, would be our expansion opportunities. That, Am I saying that right, Steve? The conference area expansion. Yeah, conference area. Yeah, I think and then a good idea. Um, since Pennsylvania Avenue is possibly an economic development area and uh, connects with the downtown, maybe uh, that way we can maybe put a like a I don't know two three story garage that would be next to the building, serve the businesses, uh, like you just said, sell a pad site for a developer or two kind of like Cal Gray or, you know, others that are, have been big developers in the town. Yep. And then that incorporates, and that's part of possibly when we review the 2009 comprehensive plan, that thought could enter into that document, correct? Or we're reviewing that this year, yeah. correct? Yeah. So I like that idea. I think Steve has already broached that with all of us. Am I correct in saying that, Steve? On a conceptual basis, yeah. Yeah, conceptually, yeah. But I think that would then go towards also the chief. In the last meeting, we had him um, or directed him to look into the potential of renovating the wharf building, renovating this building, maybe taking those resources and time to move forward on this, you know, Go, go stop at Greg Torchio Architects and say, give us a, you know, a concept plan, you know, so that we can then consider what you're talking about. Right. I, I do think that Joe should still go down the path that he's going and, and finding out the viability of the wharf and then let Steve go down at least the initial path here of, 
You know, what, what does he say? Uh, you know, what do you think? Look, what do at you all, look at all the space needs for all the departments. Right. Because it's kind okay. of been put on the back burner to address all of those needs. And really, with the chief bringing, you know, up the need of one of the departments need, needing some space, you know, I think it was good timing to just, we should go ahead and try to look at all the departments. Well, you also said that currently the current town hall is... Let's just say it's been kicked down the road, the maintenance of that building. And uh, we have a significant portion of our admin there. I think uh, they, their needs need to be addressed, so to speak, also. Yep. And that if we can in the next, I'll just throw a number out there, next six months, we could get a concept plan for the building. And then we can start looking at, okay, what's the next step? You know, get a design. A uh, plan, as uh, Steve Klein has said in the future, we need to look to the future, right, Steve? Yeah, it's, it's expensive. Yeah. You know, I think this would be good because this, I mean, Vincent Center serves the county so well. Why should we, the town, not be uh, giving our employees and the bare ability to do service to the town citizens uh, less than that? And I think it would be a wise investment on our part, and I appreciate uh, Tim bringing it up and uh, you know, moving forward with it. Steve, what do you need from, from the council in terms of whatever your next step is going to be? I would say just as long as there's consensus that you're uh, you know, okay to move forward with doing an analysis of space needs for all the departments, and, and once we determine the space needs, and we can take the next step to uh, you know, formulate, you know, yeah conceptual designs on, on options on the property. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Steve. Yeah, I, mean, I would I would just like to flag that I would really, we've, we've started to get the police department back where they need to be in terms of salary. You know, I, I think, speaking just for myself, I would rather be appropriately paid than to be in the most high-tech real estate I, I, you know, we can afford. So I would just put getting competitive salaries to our town staff in front of this. Uh, I'm not saying I'm opposed to it, and Steve and I talked about it. I'm, I'm all for looking at what we're going to do here, but we have heard again and again from HR, from department heads, that we are losing good folks to other places, other municipalities, other localities, and it seems to me this is a this is a little premature. Let's get the salaries figured out first, and do what we got to do there, and then uh, you know I but I I'm not objecting to the the plan. I just think we've got a lot more salary and competitiveness work to do here before we worry about you know new new drywall and things like that. I, I fully agree with what Steve's saying, but I also know that we're looking this year. I mean the 2009 comprehensive plan is going to be reviewed. I know the county is reviewing their comprehensive plan. And I think that the consideration for our employees is important, but we also need to look strategically. You don't redo the comprehensive plan every year. Well, yeah, and I think that, that these are things that can be done in parallel. I, I fully agree that uh, the fixing of the salaries is a problem that we can handle and do and deal with in the next few months like we've already done for the police department yeah we're looking at this is a long term yeah long -term what's the fix. plan you know and, and you, and you got to start somewhere and, and so i think we're not even talking about spending any money at this point it's, yeah. it's just doing it's an analysis, analysis just the very first step one of a hundred right the, yeah. the the compensation part you know i i fully would hope that kip can come back to us like like uh, the chief did and say here's what we need to do to fix this right so i i, I asked for that at our, our meeting with right. Steve to say that you know the department heads come in with the kind of plan that Chief Saboy laid out, you know. But it would be a good time. We have the budget coming up. You know, planning intensifies up until what August? I mean, April, correct? If I remember the schedule. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'd like to see if we could do the adjustment before that. And, and yeah, that but I mean, there is the procedure, the process, the timing yes. that's already moving down the road. So I, I, I agree with Tim, the parallelness of these two efforts is, a, I think. Do you, uh, are you okay with the consensus of, of starting? Okay, all right, Steve, I think you've got your consensus there. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, correspondence. So I've got one letter here that I want to read. It's actually a proclamation. Uh, this actually is December 27th, 2020, Evelyn Berry Day proclamation. This is obviously a little bit late, and, and uh, there was a, um, a presentation by the county commissioners. I know the chief was there. He was right down, she lives right down by your house, and you probably saw it as well. But I just wanted to read this into the record as well. Whereas Evelyn Berry was born to Calvin Butler and Blanche Scott Butler, December 27th, 1920, and is celebrating her proud age of 100. And whereas Evelyn Berry was born in Price Station, Maryland, and has been a resident in the town of Centerville for 98 years. And whereas Evelyn Berry has two siblings, Ruth Tabler and Jean Butler, born to the Butler family, and her sister Ruth and her husband Dan have lived across the street from Evelyn for 70 years. And whereas Evelyn Berry attended school at Centerville Elementary and graduated from Centerville High School. And whereas Evelyn Berry fell in love and married Oliver Allen Berry and raised two daughters, Joy Jones and Bonnie Cassidy. And whereas Evelyn Berry worked at the Maryland State Livestock Laboratory, Wilson Food Company, Willis and Feed Company, C&P Telephone, and Edwards Pharmacy, where she retired after 26 years of services. Uh, and whereas Evelyn Berry served as a volunteer for Corsica, Hill, Nur Corsica Hills Nursing Home for 42 years and the Queen Anne's County Department of Community Services Area Agency of, on Aging for 29 years. And whereas Evelyn Berry was inducted in 2016 as an honoree of the Maryland Senior Citizens Hall of Fame, Inc., and whereas Evelyn Berry enjoys spending time doing yard work at her home and growing beautiful flowers, and whereas Evelyn Berry deserves great recognition for not only reaching a tremendous milestone by turning 100 years old, but for her dedication and contribution to her family and community. Now, therefore, we, the Town Council of Centerville, do hereby wish Evelyn Berry a wonderful and happy 100th birthday and wish her many more years of health and happiness. Now, therefore, be it hereby proclaimed at the Town of Centerville in Maryland, hereby recognizes Evelyn Berry and proclaims December 27, 2020, her birthday as Evelyn Berry Day. In witness whereof, the Town Council of Centerville has hereunto subscribed their names this 23rd day of December, 2020. And Steve, I believe you did drop this, the signed uh, copy off to Ms. Berry. Yes. All right, that's all the correspondence I had. Carolyn, is there anything else? No, all right. Report of Boards and Commissions, Park Advisory Board. I think Mike Whitehill, <laughs> he pretty much summed it up for the Parks Board, uh, which was a great presentation, uh, but we did not meet uh, this week because we did not have a quorum, so we are moving forward with hopefully some Zoom meetings in February. Okay. Can I ask one question? Yes. Uh, could you send me an email with the three winners of the Christmas tree? Of course. Contest. Yep, not a problem. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, again, I'd like to... Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Bob, I do have it here if you want. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay, we got it. Okay. Love it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Centerville Economic Development Authority? Yeah, so we, we've not met. I believe they are scheduled to have a seated meeting on the 19th of January uh, if, if we can assemble a quorum, and I certainly hope that we can. And as I mentioned earlier tonight, I uh, CETA, I think, needs a charge from this council, and I would like for the near-term charge, uh, if we can agree on it tonight, to be bird-dogging and uh, just just being the liaison with the fiber optic communities to make sure that fiber serves all the communities of this town. It seems like the kind of thing that uh, CETA should be interested in, and, and I think I so. uh, could could be the ones handling that. So give them something to do in the near term, and I think this is the essence of economic development development for the downtown. Uh, I think it'd be a, a real game changer, and uh, I'd like to talk to Chairman Rowden about doing that, uh, if, and let him know he's got the support of the council here. Uh, tonight, if I can do that, I'm in full. I'm in full. Uh, favor I'm in full of that. support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full support. Okay. Well, let's hope that they can get a quorum together on the 19th. Uh, anything else? Nope. All right. Queen Anne's County Council of Governments. Anything there? I haven't had a meeting. Okay. The last two months. And January we'll was have canceled one in February. January, too? January canceled or no? January That's was January canceled. canceled. Yeah. Okay. All right, moving on, Centerville Planning Commission. We don't have any updates. The last time the uh, commission met was before our last meeting, so I did give an update then. We did swear in Tim Zuella, who is our newest member of the Planning Commission, so looking forward to having him uh, get involved here. On, uh, I believe the next meeting is on the 20th. Maryland Municipal League, Bob, any updates? Nope. Uh, I'm going to be uh, contacting them about a few issues that I think we need to be aware of. Okay. And I will report back. 
Okay? Uh, Nothing. Right. I'm formulating, reading all the documents and stuff. Okay? okay? Thank you, though. All right. Reports of department heads. Town manager. Uh, started working on the uh, FY22 budget, and we're still working with the developer's uh, contractor to uh, complete the punch list of items out there in phase three of uh, Northbrook. So okay. hopefully they'll be wrapping that up soon. Very good. Thank you. Any questions? Chief? Good evening. Reflecting back to the council meeting on 12 17 20, specifically addressing an actuarial study for Lee Ops. I've contacted the state representative, state retirement representative, with an inquiry uh, to have an actuary study cost and next steps prepared, and hopefully I can present that at our next regular meeting. Um, just a kind of a public reminder that uh, COVID testing continues at the Queen Anne's County Health Department. Uh, this month, it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week, and January 19, 25, and 26. And those times are from 10 o'clock till 1 p.m. And I would ask that uh, motorists please be mindful not to block any residential or business driveways while waiting in the line. Um, as directed, the holiday bags for the coin-operated parking meters were removed on January 4th, and our officers have resumed parking enforcement efforts. Uh, red speed update regarding the uh, speed cameras. Um, I've spoken with our representative from Red Speed. Uh, he's agreed to conduct a traffic study for South Commerce Street at Kidwell, which will begin this month or next, uh, to measure average speeds at that location in an effort to ensure the safety of students, staff, visitors, vehicular and pedestrian traffic near the Y River Upper School. On Tuesday, January 5th, a meeting was held with Off Campus Parking Company, uh, as mentioned during our last regular meeting. Uh, they have offered an automated parking solution. Uh, they do offer automated parking solutions for cities and towns with paid parking spaces. Uh, a recommendation for the town is forthcoming and may be considered in collaboration with the Town of Centerville Parking Study. And then finally, uh, a CPD 2020 year in view review will be made available to the council members at the next regular meeting. Yeah, go. Uh, serendipitously, I ran into our count, county commissioner, Steve Wilson, and he was telling me that by tomorrow, he should have a Queen Anne's County Department of Health plan for vaccinations, which will be uh, expeditiously done which will go on top of testing. So I don't know if you want to coordinate with, I assume Sheriff Hoffman is already planning for that increased activity in town. And uh, Commissioner Wilson said that they're looking for uh, a site where they could do quasi assembly line, uh, shooting people up with the vaccine. So that that might be, under consideration that it's not just the health department, it might be in another area of our town. So I just, he just told me this on Tuesday. I don't know if you've had an opportunity or you heard of that. Uh, so I'm just sharing it with you, Chief. Thank you, yes, I, I have been in constant uh, communication and conference calls with our law enforcement partners, uh, the Department of Health and uh, the fire department here in Centerville which has been a proposed site for the vaccine, okay. a temporary site. Uh, and I'll continue to maintain communications with those partners uh, as the vaccines uh, continues to be released. Because I know there's intense interest in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. obviously. And yeah. so I get, keep getting uh, <laughs> queried, you know, so I just. They already had one you. clinic at the firehouse. Uh, what's today? They had it to six. They vaccinated some people, first responders, and, stuff. Right. and I know Ken Island has another one tomorrow at Ken Island Firehouse. So right. they've been rolling the vaccine out. So it's very important to have the vaccines get our economy back in shape. Uh, regarding the parking, I think that's a, you know, it's a good relevant topic. The council has had an earmark for a parking study for the whole downtown area for many years now. We have pushed it out uh, during the construction. Uh, construction is, is done now. And I think that 
uh, you know, when we get this presentation from them or, or whatever documentation they're gonna, they're gonna give us, uh, there's the potential of, of being able to utilize some of this. I actually sat in on a meeting with, with Joe uh, and there's, you know, there's some great data points I think that we could possibly get uh, from this. And ultimately we wanna solve and figure out what is the parking solution, right? How many spots do we have? Where do we have the spots? What can we do to get the downtown parking for the buyers, right, if you will, and the employees to park somewhere else? So I think there's a potential of, of, some, of the, uh, some of these things here as well. Uh, in addition, during that meeting, one of the things the guys were talking about was, a, was an app that is used for reserving parking spaces. I forget what it was called, Hero Shop, spot hero, something like that. Oh, yeah, and there's a potential that. of using that down at the wharf for overnight where you would, you know, you're not guaranteed a spot, but you could pull that up and you can automatically pay for transient docking. Uh, they take a little cut of it, but there's that potential too. So I've got to call into those people uh, as well. I don't have any other questions. Anybody? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chief. Sir. Director of Public Works, George, do you want to say anything tonight? Thank you. The, um, right now we're getting started on working on the budget. We have meetings next week to, to get that rolling forward. Um, staff with, in, within the streets department and the water wastewater department this time of year, we spend a lot of time doing maintenance on vehicles, facilities, you know, all the things like that, that we can't get done in the summer because we spend so much time mowing grass and taking care of the cemetery and all those types of things. So um, we are able to get some of these projects done, you know, maintenance on equipment, maintenance on buildings, you know, replacing valves, you know, at the wastewater plant. It's just a, a you know, a, a bevy of things that we, we try to get done this time of year. Um, and uh, we're, we're moving forward. Good, Christmas tree pickup's going well as well. Uh, we started, yeah, first, um, every Tuesday this month, we went Christmas tree pickup and, um, we uh we changed up the way we did it a little bit this year it's less stressful on staff we're using the, we're throwing the trees in the loader and loading it in the truck instead of right you know humping it ourselves so it actually it went quicker and it was like i said it was much easier on staff especially being a little short-handed so fantastic everybody Great. anybody else anybody yeah, i have one is how is kip kips i talked to him today he's 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 doing okay he um he uh I talked to him and he mentioned that he was quarantining himself and, and I'm just inquiring. I hadn't had a chance to follow up on it. Yeah. So, so yeah, okay? I talked to him. He's doing okay. Yeah. All right. And I told him, let us know if you need anything. So. Yeah. Just tell Kip we're thinking of him. Okay. Do. Now he's you. actually watching because he texted earlier. So. <laughs> hey, Kip. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thanks, uh, George. Right. Thank you. Thank uh, you, George. Next, we just got town clerk. Um, I just have one quick thing. I just want to, this is more of a um, informational um, item I wanted to bring up, but I would like if the council is okay to add it to next month's agenda. Um, I had a training last month with the, I'm part of the Maryland Clerks Association, um, and we talked about consent agendas, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with consent agendas, but it's basically grouping items um in a almost a separate agenda to where they would be approved as one motion instead of individual motions so um i don't i won't go into all the specifics because there's a lot of, that has to go into it before that would be approved by the council but um just a thought for you to gnaw on and i would like to bring it up next week send more information to the council for consideration yeah, let's put it on the agenda. Can you do a little presentation? Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay. It saves anybody, time. That's anybody right. else have anything else? We're out of here by nine. I guarantee it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Citizens Forum. Is there anybody that wants to come up and uh, say their three things? Come on up. Introduce yourself. Say where you live, and you've got three minutes. I am Elaine Studley, and I live at 201 South Liberty. Um, 
I am interested in the fiber optic. It is really has a, a very genuine and very powerful interest for me. And a group has formed in town about 20 citizens who have expressed a common interest. Part of it came from simply not knowing. Um, I think as time evolves and a large council gets going, then communication with citizens is going to improve. And I think that probably will lay to rest some of the concerns. But there's been a lot of conversation on it. So I wanted to kind of give you my perspective on it and then introduce some of the things that I have heard from the citizens on it. Um, I would love if we could have a conversation. And Nick, in fact, has joined the citizens group and is kind of communicating back and forth with us. Um, <clears throat> my children grew up with fiber optic. I started and ran a business under fiber optic. 20 years ago, Verizon approached me, came to my home, they talked to me, and they allowed me to do my own cabling. We did a great job, and it delivered 90 megabits, or almost 300 times what I presently get today. Multiple, um, multiple studies link fiber optic to improved GP in a county and lower catalyst and a catalyst for uh, or improved unemployment at the community level. Fiber optic is a catalyst for millennial businesses. It tends to drive new small business. One of the greatest benefits of that is new opportunity for recent graduates. Fiber tends to just up all of that. The need for this bandwidth is actually in going to increase. COVID will leave behind a legacy of streaming video, cloud applications, virtual offices, and online classroom. That's not going backward. I have articles with me that I'm just going to hand out to you. Um, I, my feeling about it is the more we know, the better off we are. And I would love the whole council on board with making sure the community, this is a community thing. We do know the window for what um, Talkie happens to be doing will close in about five months. And that's when they'll begin to start going through town. It's not a very big shock that it would take two years to complete. That, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, so I have those articles and I'm going to pass those out and I'm going to really quickly go over what some of the advantages are, not all of them. Uh, my children enjoyed a competitive advantage throughout their career. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, this altered their future. Fiber won't increase development. It will increase college ad admissions, new business starts, GDP and unemployment, employment rather. Te um, the state of Tennessee did a, te a test on, or actually a study of 95 counties. And the counties where they paced the fiber, there was a direct correlation to the improved GDP over a five-year period. Talkie fiber itself, so fiber attracts a new age group. It, it tends to feed the commercial tax base, and it opens up job opportunities. Kids leaving school end up with more interesting opportunities, and it really is one of the concerns. One of the concerns we've talked about in the group is we'd love to have more opportunities for our kids, and we'd love to be a Anyway, well, so I'll go to the end of it. The group is forming. I will not have the time to go through some of the advantage, so I'll just give out the paperwork. I would love to have a dialogue going back and forth. One of the concerns we have about this is when it got here, we didn't really know what was going on. And for those of us who want to run a small business, that 300, for me personally, a 300% increase in the improvement of my throughput and a 30% decrease in cost is monster. It's a really big deal. A lot of folks expressed some cynical ideas that, that we weren't going to have cooperation on this and that we weren't going to. And I kind of turned around and said, yeah, maybe we will. You know, why can't this be a place where the citizens and the town can kind of unite, unite and have a conversation? To us, it doesn't matter who does it. It really doesn't, you know, and, and if one group's better than another group, that's fabulous. But I think keeping the citizens in the loop and on board um, and understanding is just a fabulous thing. So thank you. Uh, these are for you. I thank you for the time. All right. I think we're all excited about the potential of. of yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. About the uh, the potential of, of fiber coming everywhere in town. I think it's a great thing. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else for Citizens Forum? Uh, hearing none, I'm going to move on to Council Roundtable. Uh, Council Member uh, Anania? Um, I do not have anything. Okay. Council Member Keel? Oh. I just want to thank uh, Steve and Kip for the tour of the town. I've learned some things about the town that I, I didn't know before, but it was very interesting. All right. Thank you. Council Member Hardy. Uh, I'd just like to thank our admin staff in Town Hall. Norma and Betty Jean do a wonderful job. I think without them, uh, we would be less efficient and professional. So thank them. And Happy New Year to you all. All right. Mr. Klein? 
I'm going to yield back my time, Mr. President. All right. I got a couple of quick things. Again, I mentioned it very quickly earlier. I was able to do the Goodwill Fire Department uh, swearing in. Uh, the other night, it was not as big of a fanfare as it has been in the past, but uh, it, was, it, it certainly is an honor that they, that they chose the town council to be uh, the ones that do that. Um, in addition, I would like to introduce an ordinance coming up next time. There is a, uh, Delmarva Power has a, has a small tower, a 100-foot tower, uh, down at the property that they have uh, here in coming out of town. They want to they want to increase it to 120 feet and our um, our zoning does not allow that. So it's in an industrial zone. It's the only one of its kind in town. So I'm going to I'd like to put forth a, an ordinance to uh, allow for a text amendment to allow it to go up to I think it's 120 or 124 with whatever thing they have on that. So that's that'll be coming uh, upcoming here in the next uh, next council meeting, it'll go through the text amendment process. Uh, I don't have anything else. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Done. Good.